So what is the net effect of shear as it applies to a cubic fluid particle? Well, uh, we've seen before that when we try to break up shear as it applies to, for example, a cubic particle like this, um, and we break this up into x, y, and z components, when we look at only one direction, the x direction, we have to add up the contributions from three pairs of faces. One is this pair, front and back, one is this pair here, left and right, and one is this pair here, top and bottom. And so we wrote this equation here that says the shear in the x direction, so the x component of shear as it applies to this particle here, is the volume of the particle multiplied by the sum of three vectors. And every time those vectors are the change in the direction of the shear pointing in x on the surface perpendicular to that direction. And so we said, um, there must be a better way of writing this. And the good news is there is. And so for this, uh, we need to go back a little bit in time to the previous operator that we saw before. When we looked at pressure, we used the operator gradient. Gradient doesn't mean anything. It's waiting to be applied to something. And the gradient is applied to scalar fields. So if you have a scalar field, a field of pressure, a field of temperature, you apply a gradient to it, and it will tell you, it will give you a vector in space. And every time the local vector is in the x direction, it is the change in x of that thing. In the y direction, it is the change in y of that thing, and so on and so forth. Um, so that if you apply it to a field, a, for example, um, then it tells you in which direction A is getting bigger. So every time you have a vector, it points into which direction and by which magnitude uh, the value A is getting larger in space. Okay, this is the gradient. And now we introduce a cool new toy. And this toy is the divergent. The divergent is similar to the gradient, but it's a little bit different. The divergent, like the gradient, is... A tool. It doesn't mean anything by itself. It's um, an operator that's waiting to be applied. When you apply it to a vector field, you will take the change in x of the dog product of the i vector and your vector, the change in y of the j vector and your vector. So that every time you have this dog product of a unit vector in the direction and your vector, which means you're going to have the component in this direction of your vector. So let me give you an example. You have a vector field A like this. You take the sum here of three terms and every time it is the change in X of the X component of A, the change in Y of the Y component of A and the change in Z of the Z component of A. Uh, so if you write it uh, perhaps in a more compact way, partial partial X of the x component of a, partial partial y of the y component of a, and so on and so forth for z. This is a scalar. It's a number. Um, at any point in space, you're going to have a scalar value that gives you by how much the x component of a is changing in a, plus by how much the y component of, of a is changing in y, plus by how much the z component of a is changing in z. So what happens if we apply this to now a tensor field. Well, the same process happens. If we apply this to a tensor field, the number of dimensions reduces by one, one step. And we can come back now to this net force in or the x component of the net force due to shear, which we said was the change in z of something on planes perpendicular to z, plus the change in y of something on planes perpendicular to y, and so on and so forth for z. Um, this thing here, we can write it like so. We can say it is the divergent of the component of the shear tensor that is in the x direction. Okay, this is super cool. Because now when we sum up, not just x, but x, y, and z, as it applies to this approximately cubic, uh, infinitely small particle, we have, bam, net force due to shear is made of three components, one in X, one in Y, one in Z. And every time each component is the divergent of the component of the shear tensor in this direction. Okay, so we can write that even in a more compact way by saying, well, a second, the divergent of the X component, divergent of the Y component and divergent of the Z component as a vector, this is 
just the divergence of the shear tensor. And so we get this equation here, which is kind of cool, which is the net force due to shear per unit volume on a certain small box like this. It is the divergence of the shear tensor. Shear tensor has here 18 components. And when we take the divergence of this, we reduce this into three components. And this will give us in newtons per meter cube, um, the amount of force that the shear is exerting um, on this particle around here. So the net force per volume is the divergence of the shear tensor. This will be extremely useful once we start adding the three kinds of forces that apply to a fluid, uh, pressure, gravity, and shear together and say the sum of those forces is equal to the mass times acceleration of the particle. But this we keep for the next chapter. In, um, in the weight for this chapter, let's just recap what we saw before. Pressure has only one component. Pressure is a scalar field. It means at every point in space, there is only one local value of pressure. It doesn't have a direction. When we have pressure on a certain volume, we need to take into account six components, one for each of the six faces of the cube. So it's a matrix, if you want. And once we take into account all of those values to calculate the net effect of all those pressure effects, um, then we take the gradient of pressure. And the gradient of pressure has three components. It's a vector field. So we have everywhere in space one vector with three components pointing um, as to the direction and the magnitude with which pressure is pushing the particle. This is for pressure. Now let's take a look at shear. Shear at a point has three components. Shear is an arrow. It points um, in some specific direction with some magnitude. Um, so it's a vector field. When we apply shear to a volume, there are six faces on this cube. On each of those six faces, we're going to have one three component vector. So there are 18 components in total. This is a vector made out of vectors, which we call a tensor. Um, and then the net force due to shear. We don't want all 18 values. We want the net effect of all those 18 values. We take the divergence of shear. And the divergence of this tensor has three components. And it is a vector, a vector field. Um, so here we are. Uh, let's just uh, take a few looks, um, look at a few pictures to conclude. Uh, this is not exactly a fluid. It's not exactly a solid either. It is ice flowing down a glacier. And I like uh, ice flows on the glaciers because they display pretty well um, the effect of shear because they fracture and they fracture in, in ways that are very elegant. And so I like to see, I like to visualize um, in those photos uh, the direction and the, the net effect um, of shear on the ice. Here, for example, accelerating the ice. But you also have shear, which is downwards as the ice progresses horizontally. Um, and you also have shear sideways as the, as the ice flows uh, downwards. Uh, this is actually, this one here is my favorite picture uh, because we can see pretty well the sideways shear effect uh, on the ice as it moves down uh, the, the, the valley. Uh, so here you are. This is how we quantify shear uh, in fluid mechanics.